Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering CCNA new topics added to the exam 200-125. And this is section 4.1, Wide Area Network Technologies Overview. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to explain the purpose of Wide Area Network. Now, a wide area network operates beyond the geographic scope of local area network. Wide area networks are used to interconnect the enterprise LAN to remote LANs in a branch site and telecommuter sites. You need to remember that the wide area network is owned by a service provider. But an organization must pay a fee to use a provider's network service to connect to remote sites. So for example, here's the enterprise campus. Here we don't have to pay anybody to use the enterprise campus. Everything is under local area network because the cables are usually going to reach from one side to the other side of enterprise campus. If you want to connect this side, for example, the enterprise campus is in London and remote sides we have them in Paris, we can't connect them with a single cable because, well, you have to, you have to run that cable through somebody else's property for you to be able physically connect in Paris and London. So you have to actually pay the wide area network to give you that ability so you can connect two branches together. So that's why that's what we need wide area network to connect our branches, headquarters to branches, to connect telecommuters to the our headquarters or remote users. In contrast, local area networks are typically owned by the organization and used to connect local computers, peripherals and other devices within a single building or other small geographic area. So different topologies that we have for wide area network, interconnecting multiple sites across wide area network can involve a variety of service provider technologies and wide area network topologies. Common wide area network topologies are point to point, hub and spoke, full mesh, and dual mesh. For example, this is point to point network. That even though in the cloud you're probably going through so many routers or switches, as far as they're concerned, this, the PCs, uh, sorry, the routers, the site routers are, it's point to point connection. It's like a tunnel. I put the, put the information here, I know it's going to end up on the other side. So this employs a point to point circuit between two endpoints, typically involving a dedicated least line connection. Hub and spoke used when a connection between multiple sites is required. Single interface to the hub can be shared to all spokes circuit. So for example, this is your hub and all of them are spokes. So usually connection comes from the spoke towards the hub. The spokes usually don't connect to each other. Here, for example, if we have this kind of topology, we have to be worried. Uh, we have to have think of uh, reachability issues. These are our concerns on this type of network. One of the problems would be, for example, Split Horizon. Split Horizon says that if you receive information on one interface, do not send it out of the same interface. So, for example, in this topology we have Hub and Spoke, um, Site A, for example, sends an update, a routing update, towards a hub. So it's going to go out of this in the interface, but it can't go out of the same interface. So if Site A advertises something, some network, Site B and C is not going to know about it because hub is not going to forward it. So there's a few things that you can do to solve this problem, solve these reachability issues. For example, you can disable the split horizon, but disabling the split horizon is going to be, you know, you could potentially create loops. That's why split horizon is there. Or what the best thing we, would, we could do is create uh, sub interfaces. So sub interface for each site different sub interface we can create point to point sub interfaces or point to multi point sub interfaces another problem would be for example if we are running ospf now ospf um you have designated all routers all the dr routers dr other routers will have a relationship a full adjacency with dr designated router now really in the ospf uh, hub and spoke topology for example we want the hub router to be our designated router and no BDR either so that our site well, for example site A, B and C will create a full relationship with the hub 
a full adjacency. Now, if site A, for example, becomes the DR, site B will never be able to communicate directly with site A. It has to go through hub and then towards the site A. And that's not possible. We have one TTL. So, for that reason, we have to make sure that these spokes, they will never become the DR or BDR. To do that, we have to reduce the priority to zero. So, in that case, they will never take part in the election. We have a full mesh topology. Full mesh, any sites can communicate directly with any other site. This advantage here is disadvantage here is the large number of virtual circuits that need to be configured and maintained. The thing is with the full mesh is the best solution, but it's going to be the most expensive. So every site connects with every other site. If one site fails, other side will be able to talk to each other still. So for example, like here, if the hub fails, these sites they will not be able to talk to each other. So they're all going through the hub. So hub is your weakest point there. So that's why you have to be uh, concerned with. In the full mesh topology, obviously we don't want any of our sites to fail, but if one of them fails, the other one will still be able to talk to each other. But this is going to be the this is the best, but it's going to be the most expensive. And then we have a dual home. We have another one that's partial mesh. It's not on this screen. Partial mesh is when we don't have the full mesh, but we have a bit more than hub and spoke. So, for example, if we if we connect site A and site B, then this will become partial mesh. Dual home topology is when you provide redundancy. So disadvantage is that they are more expensive. For example, we have two hub here connecting with the spokes. So in case of one of the hub fails, we still have a connection and that includes with the spokes as well, connecting to the other hub if one of them fails, especially if one of the hub fails, we still be able to talk to other spokes. For example, um, this is the last one. So if I, this is the topology that we've been using, all right? And uh, the configuration is here. So if I just scroll a little bit down here, that's how, for example, this is point to point topology here between R1 and R2. So if I say show IP OSPF neighbor, because I'm running OSPF, now you can see in point to point, we have this dash here. So that tells me that it's a point to point. If it's a point to point, there's no priority. So everything is, they don't elect the DR and BDR here. That's why this dash here. Or to see it, we can say show interface, um, show IP OSPF interface S000. Zero. Here, for example, if I scroll up a little bit, I can see the network type is point to point. And the point to point network, we don't elect the DR and BDR. If I go to router 3, router 3 has got a relationship on the broadcast network because there's a switch there in the middle. So to get to router 3, control shift 6x, I'll press root R th just 3 and show IP OSPF neighbor. So router 3 has got neighbor with router 2. So that's 10.1.23.2, one, this one, and 10444. That's a router ID of router 4. But you see router 3, whether router 4 has got a relationship. So router 4 is the DR. Router 3 is the BDR. So if I say show interface G00 or show IP OSPF, show IP OSPF interface G00, zero. zero. Scroll back up. We can see the network type is a broadcast because there's a switch there so we 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 just saw two type of networks so we saw the point to point and we saw the broadcast the broadcast is if you connect a switch switching it if it's a, a frame relay it would be for example non broadcast multi access this is a broadcast multi access network and you can see the designated router is 10444 and backup designated router is router 310134.3 if you remember to elect the designated router, what did they look? So they look at the priority. Now both routers, there's priority is one. So that that wasn't that wasn't the, the tiebreaker. So the next thing that they looked at it is the router ID. Router ID, highest router ID will win. So 10444 it's higher than 101 
So that's why this router or router 4 won this election. Okay. Thank you very much for watching. Please have a look in my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. This is Astrid Krasnichi demonstrating to you the new topics being added to 200 125 cores. Bye bye.